right, guys. Thanks for jumping on. We've got an informative show tonight, so let's just wait another minute or so for a few more people to jump aboard. No pun intended. Uh, I've got my co-host here and my colleague Jeff on as well. I'll have him introduce himself here uh, a little bit later. Uh, we've got some great topics pertaining to boat and pump care, uh, especially with the changing weather, at least in the Midwest and the northern colder climates. <laughs> um, I'm up here in the Chicagoland area. So feel free to add some friends, share this live event, and we will get started here in a very quick second. All right, we see that we've got some people waiting and popping in. Thank you, thank you. All right, here we go. Uh, once again, thank you for joining Johnson Pump um, on our second live Facebook event. This one will be pertaining to winterization. Uh, we've got a lot of product lines to discuss here uh, pertaining to all different kinds of boats and applications, sailboats, runabouts, wake and surf boats, um, inboards and outboards and everything in between. So remember to drop some questions in the chat uh, and you'll be entered to win some of our Johnson Pump Marine products like uh, an impeller kit of your choice, as well as the brand new Aqua Void bilge pump. So you got to stick around until the very end uh, and you just may find yourself a winner as we will be giving away more than one. All right. So to get this started, I'm Tim Gadini with uh, Johnson Pump Marine on the applications engineering side based in the chilly Chicagoland area. And with me is my co-host, Jeff. Jeff, I'm freezing. It's cold. There's snow on the ground this past weekend. All the summer toys are put away. Um, what's going on with you? Where are you located? What's the weather like? And what can you let us know about your role with Johnson Pump? Well, Tim, I'm a little bit further north than you, so it's a little bit chillier up here. Um, I'm in western Wisconsin. My name is Jeff Slobby. My business, I am the business development sales manager for Johnson Pump Marine. I also do take a lot of service calls and help out with service issues. So you may end up talking to me on the phone if you call in to our call line and need some technical help. There again, Tim mentioned that we are going through this winterization program for you to help you with any issues you may have. So please do ask questions now. We'll try and help as much as we can. Perfect. And uh, and Jeff, just, just so we can give everybody an overview here, some of the topics we're going to be talking about are things like impeller pumps. So um, ballast pumps, engine cooling pumps, and, and everything with an impeller on a boat. <laughs> Yep. Uh, as well as bilge and aerators, centrifugal style pumps. Um, and then we'll move into the diaphragm style washdowns, water pressures, and some of the accessories that go with, with that, like uh, toilets, water heaters, accumulator tanks, and, and such. So um, let's go ahead and get started here. And impeller pumps. So what, what kind of examples would we see with the impeller pumps? Well, first example I can think of with our flexible impeller pumps is engine cooling. Yep. Um, most people have a flexible impeller pump that is cooling their engine compartment. Um, it's cooling the engine usually through a heat exchanger and that sucks the raw water up from the lake or the ocean, whatever you're in, and runs it through so it goes through another cooling system to run your boat. If that freezes, obviously it can be detrimental to your system. Yep. Uh, going on, there are some other flexible impeller that we use water transfer, um, for instance, ballast pumps, um, when we want to put weight in the boat for wake surfing. Perfect. And, and Dip, you named two, two fantastic examples there. Uh, some people use the flexible impeller pumps for like a one-way bilge. If you're trying to get the all the water out of the bilge, this is the right style pump to do that. Um, but really ballast engine cooling, uh, whether it's inboard or outboard engines too, uh, they both use impellers. Um, they're, they're, they're pushing water through the engine system to keep things cool. So what kind of examples do we, would we be seeing for proper maintenance or care to be removing water from those systems? What, what would you advise? The best way to ensure your flexible impeller pump system is going to be dry and going to be weatherized for the winter is if you can remove the cover plate to let any excess water come out. 
If you can pull the impeller, if it's an easy pullable impeller, that's even better. That'll make sure that there's no water residual left in that pump. Um, sometimes it's difficult to unhook hoses, but in a perfect world, you unhook the hoses so they can drain down as much as possible. There's not a chance of any water hanging up in those hoses. Yep, and Jeff, you mentioned removing the impeller. One of the big things with removing an impeller would be reducing the probability that an impeller will have an impression, uh, and compression set. Uh, compression set is when the rubber actually takes the shape of the cavity that it's in, or you know, kind of like under load. Um, and what would happen is if you didn't do something like that, it'll it'll set, and the next time you go to start up, it will maintain that shape and, and not give you good priming or performance. Um, and depending on how the compound is, what it temperatures it's exposed to, uh, it, it could actually ruin the impeller over time, which causes issues down the line. So like you said, if you can pull the front cover, allow the pump to, to drain, remove the impeller, that would also likely let your hoses drain into the pump. Um, what would you do to be collecting some of the water uh, if that would be falling out, so to speak? In a perfect world, we'd put something underneath so we can catch the water. Most of these situations, there's not enough room underneath that pump to put any catch pan. So put a towel down or prepare your winterization in a way that you can start from the top of the boat, work down to so the last thing you're cleaning up and getting the water out is out of the bilge. Beautiful. Yep. You, ensure that. you could almost use your bilge pump to pump out the bilge. <laughs> you know, it's design intention. Um, so, so really the goal here and, and with every sort of pump uh, system on the boat, the, the goal is to get the water out, uh, especially in cavities that will contain our trap water, because in the event of a freeze, the freezing water will expand and cause some damage. Uh, you could blow out seals, you could blow gaskets, um, depending on the, the type of material, you could damage and crack things, which I'm sure we'll, we'll get to with some examples later. Um, but no, definitely, definitely remove, store in dry, clear, uh, clean places. And this way you can reuse those impellers next season if, if you needed to. So great examples. Yes, Tim. I see we have a question from Richard about any special tools to change an impeller or pull the impeller. Some impellers will come out fairly easily. You can take them out by hand. Um, some of the bigger, longer impellers, you will need a, a puller. There are specialized tools for that. And we do also have a universal flexible and pump impeller, impeller puller that can be used. Um, it'll grab the impeller and pull it out uh, by pressure on the shaft. So that's a good tool to have on hand if you have those kind of things that you need to use for. Perfect. So that was an impeller puller, correct? Yes, an impeller puller. Perfect, perfect. All right, there's a couple variations like Jeff said, and. Uh, the universal is the most universal. So take a look the other at our thing I really forgot to mention on that, Tim. Um, sorry if I interrupted you. But uh, uh, lots of these uh, outboard engines do have a flexible impeller in the lower unit. Um, the best way to winterize those without pulling everything apart, um, kind of hard to get to on most of them, is to lower the lower the trim all the way down and actually start the engine and run it so that it will run the cavities dry. Perfect. So just a, a quick little blip of the blip of the throttle, maybe even in gear safely. Um, yep. And this yeah, way it'll get in gear. discharge the water. You could, I'm sure a couple of people could use some compressed air as well, shoot it into the uh, the intake for, for any additional kind of clearing out. But no, perfect. Great, great addition, Jeff, on the outboards. Yep. All right. Topic two is Belgian aerators. Now, Belgian aerators are centrifugal style pumps, most of them, um, at least the cartridge style that we offer. And those are relatively self-draining. They don't particularly hold water unless there's a check valve or something like that, which the aerators don't, don't use those, uh, don't use check valves, but the bilge can. So Jeff, what's your take on those? Well, first take, um, check valves. Check to make sure you don't have any check valves in there. If you do, obviously we do need to take the hoses off, take the check valves out. Uh, that's a potential freeze point. Um, we have fittings on the end, so it's likely that it's gonna freeze and break that fitting if it does have water solid in there. 
Um, yep, there you go, Tim. Um, that that 90 degree fitting, if that's holding water, it ice is probably going to break that. Yep. So we definitely want to get that out. Um, beyond that, the next thing I would do is I would pull the cartridge out of the top of that pump to make sure that we can clean that up. That's going to be a challenge for you, Tim. <laughs> Use two hands. <laughs> it's not my starboard's not glued down. Right. Right. It's a little more complicated when it's not set in place. Um, but yeah, pull that up, make sure there's no other debris in by your impeller, inspect it, make sure everything spins smoothly, and you are ready to go so that next year when you put it back together, it's all cleaned up and ready for you. Perfect. Yep. Take a peek down inside, make sure there's no rocks, sand, fishing white line, anything like that. Perfect. Reinstall. All right. Um, Jeff, one of the points you had made about removing the check valve. Um, if water were to get trapped in here, like you said, this was a, a freeze point and it could crack fittings, um, it could crack your hose, shouldn't, um, but you don't want to really take that risk. Uh, one of the other points I wanted to mention was for people messing with the, the bilge and aerator hoses is some hoses dip a little bit, sag a little bit, and they actually trap water additionally further down the hose. And it's a good idea to also take your hand and kind of walk along the length of the hose, tilting it upright, just like a garden hose, um, where to get all the water out to get it to flow backwards through the pump, um, or actually through the line into the bilge, yep. which you could then collect with uh, a hose, I'm sorry, with a towel or, or a rag later on. So good points on that one. Yeah, Tim, and it's another good chat time to check. Lots of times those hoses can rub up against your hull. Um, they can become damaged over time, and it's a good time to run your hand on there, make sure the water's drained down, and see if there are any frays or any wearing on the hose. Yep, addition, addition to that, um, people who have the hoses coming up and then running below the floor, that is a collection point of water as well. So inspecting the hose, you can find low spots and, and actually raise them up or fit them better to make sure it's a smooth transition of the water flow. Um, right. All right, we do have uh, a, our first winner that we can announce, um, Richard Scott. You Please let us know your choice of either a Aquavoid bilge pump uh, or an impeller kit of your choice. Let us know which one you'd like to select. And if you need assistance with that, we could help you. Send us a direct message through Facebook and we will follow up with the shipping details. Congratulations, Richard. All right, you won't be disappointed, we promise. <laughs> All right, um, Jeff, aerators. So some aerators have different fittings, whether it's a spray bar, the twist-in type, um, they have seacocks attached. What, what else can we think about in regards to making sure we drain all the water out of those pumps? Well, first thing, I mean, like you said, a lot of the aerators do have a spray bar. Um, some of the spray bars can be turned. You wanna make sure they're turned in a down position. Um, thank you, there's a, there's the aerator through hull. Um, that particular one does have the through hull fitting, so you're not gonna have a seacock on that. That will drain itself back out if positioned correctly. But as you can see, the through hull still would have the pump housing be lower than the through hull, so it's not gonna drain completely out. So we're gonna to wanna to pop that cartridge out of the housing to make sure that we get all the water out. Um, and from there, like you said, we wanna make sure that we have the other end open. We do have some aerators that have valves on them so you can shut them down. That valve's closed, it's not gonna drain back, it's not gonna siphon the water back out. So we need to make sure that everything's open so all the water can drain as much as possible. Yep, and thinking of like live well tanks, um, onboard tanks, things like that, uh, most of them have, or most that I can recall, have like a, a drain tube or an overflow tube. And if you actually unscrew the tube or pull it right out, uh, that will drain into either another pump or it might have a, a overboard drain. So it's important to make sure that you let all the water out of those tanks. Um, if you have anything left at the end of the season, you know, if it's an inch or so sitting in the bottom of the tank and it freezes, it could then crack your uh, overflow tube 
uh, if it expanded too much, as well as anything further below if there's a slight leak. So something to consider, drain those tanks, wipe them down with a rag, get all that water out of there. Absolutely. Um, and people, please, if you're listening out there, if you have any questions, feel free to pop in, give us those questions. We'll try and hit those up as often as we can. Make sure we uh, answer any questions you have. And uh, anything that we do not get to on this call, we will try to come up with little ways to, to mention them online. You might see them in through Facebook posts, but uh, your answer or your question will not go unanswered. So please feel free to leave some comments. All right, Jeff, next up, we're gonna look into um, washdowns, water pressure systems, uh, which are diaphragm style pumps. Um, positives, disadvantages here, what, what can you see? Our washdown pumps and our water pressure pumps are very similar pumps. They are a piston style pump. So they are a different style. They do are okay to run dry. Um, best way that I've seen is pop those red tabs, pull the hoses out, and actually fire up the pump, run it a little bit, get all the water out of that pump. I like to do a little compressed air in the inlet side. While the pump is running, it should assist to blow all the water out of the housing of that pump. Perfect. Um, don't forget, while you're in there, the strainer should come off. Make sure we get that taken off. We get that drained out. Um, you can either take it off, completely dump it out. You're probably going to have hoses hooked to it. It's going to be difficult to do that. So pop off that uh, clear plastic cover and clean out that strainer while you're at it. It's a good uh, annual thing to do. Um, depending on the water you're in, you might need to do more often than annually, but make sure it's cleaned up and ready to go for yourself when you put it back together in spring. Perfect. And Jeff, one of the things with this, this cover and the strainer inside, um, once you're inside there, it's actually great to, to inspect the, you can see it there, the orange or reddish O-ring. Um, make sure there's no leaks or anything, no, no cracks. Um, and if, you, if there are, you would, should replace that because then if you didn't, you would have a slight air leak, which people then see reduced performance on the suction side of the pump with their washdown kits. So something to keep in mind. Um, we do also offer replacement covers. We, we know some people bang them around a little too rough <laughs> and uh, or, or fishing gear, throwing your bag in there. It, it could hit the pump depending on where, where the pump's located. Um, so they, they can be resolved there. But uh, additional accessories for the washdown pump, we have some hoses and pistols. Um, Jeff, you had mentioned re removing hoses, uh, both on the inlet and outlet side, that lets water drain back down, which is perfect. But one of the things people tend to miss, and I'm, I'm a culprit myself here at home, um, you'll disconnect it from the hose bib, but sometimes you may leave the hose hanging um, with the pistol still attached. And what happens is just like when you put your thumb over a straw in, you know, like your McDonald's cup or something like that, the, the vacuum pressure is still in the line. You actually need to depress the, the trigger on the pistol here to let the water then flow back out through the pump or uh, through the hose. So making sure you do that, but also disconnecting the hose from the pistol. This way you protect your equipment, whether it's sitting in a dry bin somewhere there, there may still be residual water that you're not even thinking about. Good point, Tim. Thanks for mentioning that. Um, moving on to the next thing in the system would be if we're using a water pressure system, um, you're gonna have a, potentially have a ballast or a, a, a accumulator tank, which will help reduce pressure systems and shock on the pressure systems when you're using your water system. Um, that accumulator tank does need to be relieved of pressure, ideally have as much water drained out of it as possible. Most of the time with the hose situations, we can't guarantee it's going to get a relief like you were just talking about with the hoses, that it's going to be a free flow, so it's going to drain back. Best to take a hose off on one side of there, if not both, so you can make sure that that does get drained out. Perfect. Um, Jeff, you had mentioned accumulator tanks, and, and we're talking now full systems here, whether you got a galley sink, uh, showers, toilets, uh, water heaters, all that, that shebang. Now, what if 
people should be opening taps too, right? Whether it's the highest, the lowest, um, this way, you know, open every tap really. And what you could do is then kick your pump on. They're allowed to run dry, uh, not excessively, but they can run dry. And what that helps do is let all taps push out the water that's in that line. Um, and then when you're throughout that entire process, leave those taps open so all the water can drain backwards through the system. Um, as long as you know where you are and where that water is gonna lead to, which is really back to the pump, uh, you can either have a, a collection bucket um, underneath that outlet side of the pump and collect some, some further water there. Um, but like yeah, you said- absolutely. Yep, we need to make sure that everything is drained down and that once we're finished draining out all of those valves and all of those sink faucets, that we also clean out any sump that it could be running into. Typically, there's a sump somewhere that uh, uh, fresh water, which is now gray water after you've touched it, is running into a sump. So whether it's a shower sump or another sump pit, we need to make sure those are cleaned out as well. Otherwise, that can freeze and cause problems. Great point. Sumps usually, yeah, dishwashers, things like that, or, or um, water drains, air conditioning yep. drains, it all leads back into a, some sort of sump. Um, definitely need to get in there, clean that out, get the water out, and uh, make sure it's ready to go for next season. So while you're yeah, doing that- We'll have check valves as well. So we need to remove the hose and pull the check valve. Correct. Um, best time to inspect fittings, things like that. You're already in there. Just like every other pump, inspect the O-rings, make sure nothing's cracked, deformed, uh, or needs replacement. But Jeff, one of the things we were thinking about was like a captain's log. And as you're going through each system, check off, hey, this is what we, you know, we found a damaged O-ring here, whether you're doing it yourself or at a marina. So something to think about. Um, Jeff, there's a conversation about RV antifreezes and, and things like that through freshwater systems. Um, I personally don't care for RV antifreeze and it does say, you know, aquatic safe and things like that, but what's your take? Right. <laughs> well, they, typically in my world, you don't really want to put a chemical into your body. You don't know if it's going to be safe. So why put it into a water system where you have the potential of it not getting rinsed out the way it should? Yep. Um, they are all still hazardous. It's just how much and how much less hazardous. So I prefer to just get it dried out, get your air compressor, blow everything out, grab a rag, dry it out as much as you can, um, blow out your water heater, blow out whatever tanks you can, um, get as much water out of them as possible. They will allow a little bit of ice to freeze and expand. As long as there's air in there, the water will expand upwards and not break things. It's the corners and the fittings and that stuff. If there's too much pressure, that's where it ends up breaking. Yep, and 100% with you on that one. And, and one of the things here too is, if you do the RV antifreeze, like you said, it's it's chemicals, it's mostly water, yes. Um, but then, if especially in the freshwater systems, you have to flush that out. And then how much more work do you wanna do on the dewinterization side flushing water or flushing the RV antifreeze out until you're comfortable with re-drinking from it. So to, in my opinion, it's best to just avoid it all together. Uh, as long as you drain things out, blow it out with compressed air, let it breathe, you should be good to go. I agree. Okay. Uh, same thing kind of goes with marine toilets, which is the next topic here. Um, let it yep. drain, throw you know paper towels or, or towel in there just to drain the water out. Do not try and flush the paper towels or towels or rags. Um, but you know, give the give the toilet a nice little clean with some cleaner, uh, very, very light dilution uh, solution um, and, and go from there. Yep. Yeah, and there again, I mean, we need to make sure that they are run and they're dry. And the other thing in that system is if you have a silent system, lots of times they have a separate pressure switch that our pressure valve that runs off of the uh, water pressure system. If that valve is closed, you're still gonna have water sitting on top of it. So we need to make sure we run that system until no more water is coming out from the pressure system. So that valve would be clear of water. Perfect, right, like solenoid valves and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely, definitely need to make sure those are open. Um, most of those 
should be triggered when the pump is activated. So people need to make sure that, hey, just because you've disconnected the lines from the pump, uh, doesn't mean there's not some pressure on the other side of that valve. So great point. Um, and then what about on the check valves? Some of the toilets do have check valves. Uh, those should probably be removed as well, leading to the uh, black water tanks. Um, at least the line sort of vented to let any other debris be flushed out through, but also that check valve should be inspected. Correct. Okay. All right, uh, we do have a question in here uh, from Keith asking, is it best to leave a live well dried out or put some RV antifreeze in there uh, in case some moisture gets in? So kind of going back to the RV antifreeze, it's not our favorite solution, um, especially in the, in the live well side. As long as you can clean up most of that moisture or really just stagnant water, Moisture is okay, um, but uh, I would not recommend going the RV antifreeze route. Dry it up, pull the drain, and, and let all that water out. But thank you, Keith. Yeah, absolutely correct, Tim. Um, obviously, you need to make sure that it's not sitting in the pump. So every situation is different on every boat. So please get to know your boat really well. Um, there should be an access port or somewhere to get to every single pump that's on your boat. So inspect that pump, make sure there's no water sitting in it, and try not to use any out of freeze unless you absolutely would have to. We prefer you don't. If that's your own discretion, it is your boat. Very good points. Um, water heaters, same thing. Um, I do know that there are drain and pressure release valves on our water heaters. There should be you know, end of the season, you're done. You've got it unplugged, all electrical's off. The pressure release will release any pressure that's standing in the tank. Um, but also the, the drain valve. Most people aren't aware that there's a, a square valve on our hot water heaters that you can turn with a pair of pliers. I think it's either 90 degree or 180 degree rotation. And it will actually drain the tank if gravity is your friend. Um, and you've got it positioned in a way. Otherwise, you may need to um, dismount the, the orientation of the hot water heater to best remove that water out. Um, that is a very contained vessel. <laughs> so it is best to make sure that you do release that pressure as well as keep that drain open. Yes, and while you're doing that, it's probably not going to drain if we don't have a relief point. So that's where your open valves on your faucets and your showers or your toilets would aid you in that draining back. Perfect. All right. Uh, it looks like we have another winner here. Uh, it looks Joseph Brenner. Please, uh, please send us your information uh, through a Facebook message to Johnson Pump, and we will get you squared away with either a brand new impeller kit of your choice or the brand new Aqua Void bilge pump. So congrats to Joseph. Congratulations, Joseph. All right. Now let's check in on some additional questions and see what you guys have dropped in the comments for us. Um, like I said before, anything we do not get to on this live event, we will put out some social media posts pertaining to that, or we can respond directly to you through uh, through messages or on our page. So please, see what we got. Yeah, Tim, it looks like we have another question from Dan. Uh, what things should I look for when I indicate service is needed? Um, when you're pulling your flexible impeller pumps, there is generally a wear plate on every one. Um, inspect that wear plate. That can reduce your performance on your flexible impeller pump very quickly. Um, also, if you see any, let me grab this here. If you see any white spots or cracking, I don't know if you guys can see this here, but down in here, this one has been broken. All uh, right, there it is. Turn it upside down, maybe. All right. So this one has the bottom that's been broken out. It could have been happened because of ice. Gets in between there and the seal, pops that, and that's broken. If you see any whitening on any of the housings, then there's probably some damage. You may want to take a closer look. 
it's a failure that could happen while you're out voting and nobody likes those. Right, right, right. Um, one thing to add to that, Jeff, to me, the way I read that question, I'm thinking about uh, impeller pumps specifically. And really, if you're inspecting the, the impeller, you can see that it's either compression set, you can see that maybe some fins could be missing, you might have picked up a rock and passed that through the system. Basically, performance of the pump or your engine, whether it's been overheating or, or something not running right, um, at least from the cooling side, that would be a, a good indication that some service is needed. Um, at least, at least looking at that impeller, which if you're draining it with the pump front cover removed, you, you should see it right then and there. So um, compression set and and any deformation or chunks missing from the uh, the impeller. Also service life, right? Everything's kind of got a service life. So depending on the material compound, you know, people keep hours uh, on their boats. They've got engine hours. So if you have that captain's log, like we were speaking about, paying attention to that, when was the last time you changed it? We do recommend at least once a season changing out your impellers. Uh, we know that if they sit for too long, they do tend to deform and can give you issues priming the next time around, as well as cooling. Yeah. Further up in the circuit. So, absolutely, Tim. I, I think you hit the last one right on the head there. People don't uh, sometimes forget that that flexible impeller pump does need to be replaced. It does need to be serviced every so often, um, or it will reduce the cooling effects. And you can always blow a motor, burn drop heads off the motor. The um, uh, uh, can't think of the word I'm looking for, but you don't want overheating issues with your engine. It uh, going to get very expensive. The sure. flexible impeller replacement is very cheap in the long run. Yep, especially if you get a free one today <laughs> yes. from, uh, from our giveaways. So yeah, no, perfect. Thank you. All right. I uh, see we got another one. Joe had asked, how do I winterize my boat if I live in warm climate and I use it all year long? Great question. Well, you don't need to winterize it. <laughs> but uh, you need to make sure you run it and you don't stop running it. <laughs> yeah, no. just keep using uh, it. No, in all reality, it. in all reality, Tim, um, winterization for us in the northern climate is a good thing because then it makes us pull our boat out of the water. We're thinking about all the things that we need to do and all the things we need to inspect, and therefore we are ending up doing our annual maintenance. We're yep. checking everything. We're making sure it's in good working order. Um, it's a good thing to do it. And a cooler season is a great time. And if you live in Florida, it's a great thing because then you're not working on it when it's 100 to 110 degrees outside. Perfect, perfectly stated. Um, Jeff, to that point though, we do offer some other products that you could be using kind of not as a winterization tool. I mean, definitely the winterization tool, but just routine maintenance. Um, oil change kits. What do you know about those two? Absolutely. Um, everybody needs to change oil on their engine every once in a while, preferably every year. Um, like we were talking about earlier uh, when we we're setting this up, um, use your oil change kit to clean out your bilge after you're done cleaning everything up and you've got your boat winterized. You're going to have a little residual water in there. It could be a lot. You have to get it all out with a towel. Take your oil change kit and pump that water out of there. Uh, I just recently did my boats. The oil change kit were great to stick down the dipstick of the uh, engine and suck that oil out of there. Uh, it helps keep everything clean, use long enough hoses so that you don't have any issue with oil on your boat. Exactly. And same with, uh, I think we offer them both pump only and with a bucket, which is a nice little feature. Waste oil can just go right into a bucket, then you can bring it to either a marina or like an auto zone, zone pep boys and dispose of that oil. Uh, but also for those inboard engines that are kind of tucked down in there, the, that dipstick tube is really nice where you, you know, remove the dipstick, then either put it down inside or some of them have that screw cap where you can actually fit on top and just pull right from the engine. Uh, and it kind of a neat little feature. Yep. Yeah, so, like anything there, if you're trying to suck the oil out of the engine, it will need a relief because you are taking up the air from the dipstick. Um, so just pop the oil fill cap off of there and it'll pump out a lot easier. Perfect. 
All right, uh, question from Joseph. What lubrication would you recommend to use on the rubber O-rings and washers over winter to keep them like new? Very important to know what materials you're using. Um, depending on the type of O-ring material or washer material, uh, some rubbers can actually absorb the compound um, that you're applying to them and swell, and some can deteriorate. So it's important to know which, which rubber you're using and then find an associated O-ring grease that will accommodate that. Absolutely. Yep, you have to know your products to make sure you're using the right products with them. And if you don't know, please consult your manufacturer or your uh, whatever it is, whether it's a pump or any sort of seal, uh, whoever built it, they should be able to at least let you know the material and hopefully they can offer something pertaining to that. So, correct. Okay. Let's see some more questions coming in. Let's see here. David has asked, my dad has a Ranger VS 1685. What would be a good setup for his boat? Um, okay, I think that's a, a very specific question with not enough context to, to, to go with here as far as setup. Could it be a water pressure system? I think he's talking fishing here. So <laughs> he's probably more talking aerators and, and things like that. So uh, David, we could come back to you with a private message, get a little more context, either Jeff, myself, uh, and help you out here. So Yeah, absolutely. Give us a call and we can help you fit that boat with whatever you're looking to fit on that for your needs. Perfect. Oh, Amy asked, what is the worst case of winterization fail you have ever seen? Very good question. Tim, do you want to take this one or you want me to? Uh, I haven't experienced one, but I, I've got a pretty good, I guess, case to, to bring up. Um, yep. All right, so let's say you ran your boat at the end of the season, inboard engine, 6.6 .6 liter, you know, GM marinized something, and a brand new boat, you leave the water in the, in the pump, that water is gonna freeze. Your boat's sitting out back, that water freezes in the line, you destroy your pump. But more importantly, where's that water pumping to? The engine, right? Through the cooling system and the cooling galleys in the, in the engine. Well, now you crack your block. Um, not only your block, whatever else that water passage leads to. So that's a big expensive mistake. And uh, Jeff and I were kinda, you know, if you're gonna blow something up, at least blow it while you're you're enjoying it, not while it's sitting in your backyard. So I, yep. I would really, really advise paying attention to to you know where your water pump is, how you can access it and get that front cover off and let it drain out. So yeah, that's that would be the worst case I could think of. Um, otherwise just flooded bilge that, you know, it should expand. I don't think that's too bad, but you, you could break right. some break some break some stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I, I up here in Wisconsin, I drive around. There's some people that store their boats outside. They tarp them up real well, but I'll see the uh, outboard trimmed all the way up. And I just cringe thinking about, I hope that they dropped it down and ran it to clear that out because all that water is sitting up in that upper unit in the by the engine compartment. And it's it can cause a lot of damage. You get really expensive really fast. Exactly, exactly. All right. Any other questions coming in? If we do not, oh, here we got something coming in. Uh, winner number three looks like David Horseman. Congratulations, David. All right, David, please uh, let us know what you'd like to select from the options of available impeller kits or aqua void bilge pumps. Okay. So Tim, while we're talking here, um, we're giving away bilge pump um, versus a flexible impeller pump. Why would somebody want to choose the bilge pump when they have a perfectly good working bilge pump in their boat? So the Aquavoid is our newest product. Has uh, 
some higher flows, higher power. It's got some awesome inline connections. Um, great new product. Really, really excited about launching this here. Uh, it's got some different features as I was trying to show you guys earlier. It's got a clip-in basket. Um, I'll show you here, kind of one-handed. A lot easier for install, depending on what, what you've got in there today, but also maintenance, right? Some people don't really think about when was the last time I changed out my bilge pump? Um, you know, I've got an example of a customer who had it in his boat with the original 1998 Bayliner that he had. Well, it, 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 things wear out over time, may not be performing as well as it could be, but also we recommend replacing certain things like bilge pump safety components within the three to five year mark. So to that point, Jeff, yeah, it's a, it's a great little product for free um, and it would do you wonders to, to upgrade to something like this with the inline connector and the versatility for cleaning and inspecting. Right, and one of the advantages of that pump also is it's a little bit easier to change out with the detachable basket should you forget and it froze and you busted the housing. And we also do have the uh, um, Deutsch connector on there, which is a watertight electrical connector that comes standard on all of our new bilge pumps. That is makes it a little bit easier to change out that motor cartridge as well. Yep. Very good. All right. And what about the impeller, Jeff? And the, the uh, impeller, <laughs> the, the flexible impeller pump is uh, definitely something you want. You're going to need. Um, you know what size flexible impeller you have. You're going to need to do some maintenance on that. That is going to need to be changed out eventually. Um, just a matter of time and the hours you put on your boat. Yep, and we, we've got a large variety of kits for the impellers. So uh, if you know the one you have, that's that's makes it easier. If not, like we said, we can help you figure out which one you need. Absolutely. So another question in here, do all pumps in a boat self drain? Any thoughts on that one? Absolutely not. Uh, we have a lot of pumps that are suction style pumps. They do not drain back. Um, they will hold water either in them or in the line beyond them. Our water pressure pumps are a perfect example of that. Um, most diaphragm pumps, all the diaphragm pumps do have a check valve or two in them. Um, so they will not drain back from that hose once they are pressurized. So it's very important to make sure that any pressurized or any water sitting above that pump situation is able to drain back by obviously the best way would be to remove the hoses and blow them out. Yep, perfect. All righty, last and final question is, do the pumps have one hose size fitting or does it come with different sizes? So I think this question was referring to the Aquavoid bilge pump. Um, and if that's the case, it, this pump comes with two fittings. They are both the same size, which is three quarter inch hose bar. So it would be either in the straight configuration as you're seeing here, or the fitting that I had removed previously, this 90 degree fitting. So you just pick whichever one worked for your application, screw that one on. Um, these are actually great fittings because once you align your hoses in the position you need, all you do is just keep spinning the nut on. Um, it actually doesn't rotate the entire thing and it makes it that much easier for you to find the perfect routing whether you got to go up, down, or around. So, all right. Um, all right. One more thing on that. There, there are obviously many different sizes of hoses run in different sizes of boats. For example, I'm going to grab this one here, show you the example. Obviously, this is a much bigger fitting than one Tim had in his hand. This is for a completely different size pump. I believe this is for our 4,000 gallon per minute bilge pump. It's a big heavy duty pump that's going to be in a much bigger vessel. Um, so they're all calibrated based on the size of the vessel, how much water they can take on and how much they need to evacuate in a situation where you have water you're taking on. Exactly. All right, guys. Well, that concludes our episode of uh, Winterization Wisdom with Tim and Jeff here. Um, please do visit our website, Johnson Pump marine.com visit us on facebook like and uh, share our information let's see here but uh thank you to everybody who attended our winners we will please uh, if you haven't contacted us already we will reach out to you 
Um, yep. And you know, give us your name, email addresses, and ship to addresses in the private message or, or direct message on Facebook. And uh, happy winterization for those of us up north. <laughs> and uh, happy maintenance for you down south. So thank you guys and take care. Thank you.